When we talk about sharks, we often immediately think of a perfect ocean predator like the great white shark with its razor sharp teeth. But it seems that Mother Nature in her vast laboratory once created a much stranger experimental version. This is Stethacanthus, a shark that carried something on its back that looked like a blacksmith's anvil or even an ironing board. In today's video, we will together unravel this million year old mystery. What did it use that bizarre thing for? Stethacanthus, this complicated sounding name means spine on the chest, even though its most prominent feature is perched squarely on its back. It was not a giant of the sea. Fossils show that many Stethacanthus individuals were only about 70 centimeters to one meter long, but some larger species like Stethacanthus productus could reach up to three meters. Nevertheless, compared to top predators of its time like Dunkleosteus, Stethacanthus was just a small fish. It lived in shallow, warm coastal waters and estuarine areas for an extremely long period, extending from the late Devonian to the end of the Carboniferous, which is approximately 382 to 298 million years ago. Let's start with the teeth. Not sharp, triangular teeth. Stethacanthus's teeth were of the cladodont type, each with a main central cusp and smaller accessory cusps on either side. This structure was not for tearing large chunks of meat, but more effective at grasping and holding small, slippery prey, such as small fish, crustaceans, and other soft-bodied creatures. This tells us that Stethacanthus was not a top predator. It was more of an opportunistic hunter cruising the seafloor to find a meal, but all those features are overshadowed by the unique structure on its back known as the spine brush complex. This structure only appeared in adult males. It was not a normal dorsal fin, but transformed into a flat wide structure of looking exactly like an anvil. The surface of this anvil was not smooth at all, but covered with hundreds of small sharp spines called denticles, similar to shark skin, but much larger and harder. When the first fossils were discovered in the late 19th century, scientists were extremely puzzled. Shark bones are mostly cartilage, so they are very difficult to fossilize intact. The initial fragments led them to mistakenly believe this strange structure was part of a pectoral fin. It took a long time and more complete specimens for them to realize its true location, right on the back where a normal shark fin should have been. And the biggest question was raised, a question that has been debated for over a century. Why? Why did a shark evolve to carry an anvil on its back? A structure that looks heavy, cumbersome, and seems to go against all principles of underwater hydrodynamics. That is the central mystery of the Stethacanthus story. To find the answer, scientists had to transform into detectives, proposing a series of hypotheses, each opening a new perspective on the life of this strange creature. First hypothesis, a self-defense weapon? This idea naturally came up first. A hard, spiky structure must be for defense. Perhaps when attacked from above by a larger predator, Stethacanthus would use its anvil as a spiky shield, making the attacker reconsider. However, this hypothesis quickly ran into several major problems. First, this structure is only found in adult males. If this were a vital self-defense mechanism, why wouldn't females and juveniles have it? Do they not need protection? This is too illogical in the natural world, where the survival of females and juveniles is key to the entire species. Second, its fixed position on the back makes defense less flexible, facing giant Predators like Hynaria, weighing up to two tons in the Devonian period, this tiny fin would be nothing more than a joke. Therefore, the self-defense weapon hypothesis was gradually discarded. Second hypothesis, a hunting tool or anchor. Another idea suggested that Stethacanthus might use it more creatively. Perhaps it used the rough surface to stir up the seabed, exposing prey hidden in the sand. Or it could be an anchor, helping the fish cling to the seabed in strong currents to ambush prey. This hypothesis is quite interesting, but it runs into the same old problem. Why do only males have it? 
If this were an effective hunting skill, it should appear in both sexes to maximize foraging ability. Another idea suggested it was used to cling to larger creatures. But this spiky structure is more about friction than adhesion, which sounds ineffective and could even be uncomfortable for the host. Third hypothesis, a scare tactic. This is one of the more intriguing hypotheses. Some scientists suggest that the dorsal fin and the patch of spines on the head might be used to mimic something more frightening. Imagine a male stethacanthus being threatened. It might open its mouth wide. Viewed from the front, the dorsal fin protruding behind the open mouth could create the illusion of a giant mouth of some sea monster with two rows of teeth, one being real teeth, the other being the spines on the fin. This is a clever intimidation strategy, often seen in the animal world. It might be enough to make a medium-sized predator hesitate, giving Stethacanthus a chance to escape. However, it still doesn't fully explain why only males have this characteristic. Fourth and most supported hypothesis, courtship and competition dance. Finally, we come to the hypothesis most widely accepted by the scientific community. This hypothesis suggests that the anvil-shaped fin is a typical sexual dimorphic trait, serving two purposes, attracting females and competing with other males. In the animal world, males often evolve elaborate, complex uh, ornamental features to display their genetic quality, such as the peacock's colorful plumage or the deer's massive antlers. The Stethacanthus's fin is very likely a similar underwater version. A larger, more impressive fin indicates a healthier male. Females would choose males with the most prominent anvils to mate, ensuring that the next generation inherits good genes. But it's not just for show. The sharp spines on the fin and head could be used in ritualistic confrontations between males. Instead of fighting to the death, they might fin wrestle each other. The weaker one would have to retreat, yielding mating rights to the victor. Some researchers even suggest that males might use the rough surface of the fin to stabilize females during mating. This hypothesis most completely explains why only males have this characteristic. Turning the anvil into a multifunctional tool is both an advertisement, a weapon in jewels of honor, and a reproductive aid. Stethacanthus existed and thrived for an astonishing period, nearly 100 million years. In comparison, modern humans have only been around for about 300,000 years. This demonstrates that despite their peculiar appearance, their survival strategy was incredibly successful. However, nothing lasts forever. By the end of the Carboniferous period, approximately 298 million years ago, Stethacanthus fossils began to disappear. Uh, they went extinct, closing the chapter on this unique shark species just before the Permian period began. The exact cause remains a mystery. No large-scale mass extinction event is precisely recorded at the time of their disappearance. Instead, their decline may have been the result of a combination of factors. The late Carboniferous was a period of drastic climate change with global cooling events and fluctuating sea levels, which may have shrunk the shallow coastal waters that were their home. At the same time, the underwater arms race continued. New, more modern and agile shark species began to emerge and directly compete with Stethacanthus for food resources. As a highly specialized fish with features like its anvil-shaped fin, Stethacanthus may have struggled to adapt. Perhaps the very specialization that was once the key to its success ultimately became a burden, preventing it from adapting quickly enough. What legacy did Stethacanthus leave behind? It left no direct descendants. Its legacy lies in its story itself. It is a powerful reminder that evolution does not always follow a straight, predictable path. It can produce bold experiments, strange designs, and unique solutions to survival problems. Stethacanthus is a testament to the boundless creativity of nature, sometimes to the point of being wonderfully bizarre. Which hypothesis about Stethacanthus's fin do you think is most reasonable? Was it used to attract mates, to intimidate enemies, or did it have another use that we haven't thought of yet?
Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you love fascinating stories about the prehistoric world, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on future explorations. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. 